is it? It comes from the Latin word radia, which means to emit rays. The definition of the word is the emission of energy as electromagnetic waves or as moving subatomic particles, especially high energy particles that cause ionization. Radiation is simply the emission of energy in the form of waves. Nuclear radiation actually ionizes materials. This means that the atoms are changed into charged particles. Now you may be wondering, radiation, uh, what do we use it for? Well, there are actually three types of radiation. There's alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha radiation is used in smoke detectors. The radiation ionizes air inside the detector. When the smoke is present, the alpha radiation is absorbed and the change is detected, triggering an alarm. Beta radiation is often used in the industry to monitor or control the thickness of materials. Using an emitter and detector, the thicker the material is, the less amount of radiation reaches the emitter due to being absorbed. Gamma radiation is used for cancer treatment. It can precisely kill the affected cells. Gamma radiation is also used for the sterilization of medical equipment and food, killing off any microorganisms or bacteria present. Also, if you're Bruce Banner, you may use it to turn into a big, green, ugly monster. There is also background radiation, which is all around us. It's emitted by animals, food, building materials, the ground, plants, air, cosmic rays, and even rocks. However, there is no need to worry about this type of radiation. Most of it is very low level, and the small amounts of it that are absorbed by your body are ineffective. The amount of natural and artificial background radiation absorbed by the average person is around 3.01 millisieverts a year. Now it takes one whole sievert to make you sick, and you have to be exposed to eight full sieverts to die. To put it in perspective, one millisievert equals 0.001 sieverts. So there is really no need to worry about background radiation. Now for the fun stuff. Nuclear fission is the splitting of one atomic nucleus into two lighter nuclei. Uranium-235 and plutonium-239 are both fissionable. However, most nuclear reactors use enriched uranium-238 containing 2 to 3% uranium-235. For the reaction to occur, the uranium absorbs the neutron. This then causes the nucleus to split into two smaller nuclei. Krypton-92 and barium-141 are released. It also releases three neutrons and lots of energy. This is a much, much greater amount of energy than released in a chemical reaction. The chain reaction then occurs when each fission event leads to a further fission event. Within a nuclear reactor, we are able to control this process so that one fission will only need to produce another single fission. In a nuclear power plant, the energy from this reaction is simply used to boil water. The water then spins turbines which power a generator. Nuclear fusion is really just the opposite of nuclear fission. Two nuclei are forced to collide at high speed so that they fuse, thus creating one heavier nucleus. However, there are problems with creating energy in this way within a reactor. The nuclei actually repel each other due to them both having positive charges. In order to overcome this, they have to be heated to extremely high temperatures. Now, we could create a magnetic field to contain the reaction. Sadly, we haven't got there quite yet. The sun is actually a great example of this reaction taking place. So if you ever want to see a nuclear fusion reaction, just look up at the sky, but make sure to wear eye protection. You should never directly look up at the sun. So that, my friends, was my video on radiation. Please do give this video a thumbs up if you learned something from it, and why not subscribe for more vlogs and science videos. See you in the next one.